Hi! So, grab your tool belts and let's get making this table. So first, a little background on this table. I needed a new kitchen table and I looked at prices on the market and they're pretty expensive right now. So if any of you out there have filthy animal, I mean children like I do, then you know they can be pretty rough on furniture so you probably don't want to spend a good chunk of change on something that they're going to ding up. So I wanted to make something that was attractive yet cheap. So this entire table build project is going to be under 150 bucks and that includes purchasing some of the tools you might need. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get wood. So this table is completely made out of 2 by material and it's all kiln dried Douglas fir. And it's important that you get the kiln dried wood because if it's not kiln dried, it's a pretty good chance that you're going to get checks or cracks in the wood. Now you can get this really easy and it's pretty inexpensive down at your local box store and it's cheap. It's pretty, pretty cheap. Well, they really don't specialize in furniture grade wood and their wood is really not cosmetically great. But if you dig around, you're likely to find something that will work out for this project. Now, all of my projects have some variability, so you can use these steps as a guide. So this table is about 16 inches long and about 37 inches wide. So it's a nice average kitchen table for an eat-in kitchen like this. But this technique will work for any size table that you could want, you just need to get larger pieces of wood. Now the first thing you need to get are two four by four inch, eight foot long Douglas fir posts. And go around and dig through the wood supply a little bit and find something that's you know pretty good looking. Now this table is fairly rustic, so don't worry about every little ding you might have in the wood. They're gonna get dinged up. I built this table purposely because I knew it was going to get dinged up by the kids. So it should look pretty good even with a couple marks on it. As you can see, there's knots and there's a couple other things and markings. And it just really brings out the character of the table and it makes it kind of look pretty cool. So once you got those posts, you're going to need a few other items. You're going to need two by fours. So get at least three two by four by eights. Um, this is going to be used to make the apron of the table. Now when it comes to the actual surface of the table, you can use any 2 by material that you want and pretty much any number of boards that you want, just up to your style. So in this case, I used 10 inch boards. They're 2 by 10s and I used four of them to make the size of the table, but I could have easily used 2 by 12s, I could have used three boards, I could have used two boards if it was a different type of table, maybe a little narrow one as an accent table. You can do whatever you want, just make sure that you start by figuring out the measurements of your tabletop itself. So in this case, I knew what it was going to be. It was going to be 60 by 37. And the reason it's important to know those dimensions is because when we make the apron, we're going to want to make sure that we do it so that it actually has a lip over the apron and you don't smack your hands into it every time you go to push back from the table. So you're going to need a couple other tools for this project. And the first one is you're going to need a drill. Uh, miter saw is really, really helpful on this project for cutting all the different pieces of wood. You're also going to need to have a Craig heavy duty pocket hole jig. Now there's other ways you can do it with different types of joinery or you can even do glue up. So if that's your thing, go ahead and do it. But for this project, I'm going to show you how to do it with these heavy duty um, pocket hole screws that will just kind of pull everything together. Let's move on to step one and go ahead and cut all our components. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the legs out of those 4x4 four four posts. We're going to make four of these and we're going to cut them to a total of 29 inches. The average kitchen table height is about 30 inches. So when you put the 2x6 or 2x8 or 2x10 boards on top that make your tabletop, this will bring it to roughly the 30 inch height that you want. Now when you're measuring for the apron, make sure you take into account the dimensions of not only the 2x4 but also the 4x4 four four posts at the end. So for this table, I left a two and a half inch space from the edge of the table to where the legs are. 
So as you go ahead and you figure out the dimensions to your table, it's probably a good idea to either draw these in the book or write them down. But the basic thing you're aiming for is you want to make the tabletop about four to five inches bigger than the dimensions of the legs that you'll be building. Now remember when you're building the apron and connecting it to the legs, the legs might stick out a little bit further than the apron pieces, so the dimension you're picking is from the edge of one leg to the edge of the other leg. Now that you got that all figured out, let's go ahead and cut all our components. We're gonna go ahead and we use the two by fours to cut the apron pieces and also a little center divider to give the table a little bit more support. And since we're already cutting, we might as well go ahead and cut all the boards for the table top and then collect all our parts in one place to get ready for the assembly. We need to start assembling the legs to this table. So we'll go ahead and we will drill pocket holes in both sides of the apron. We'll use two pocket holes per side to connect to each leg. The apron is set back a little bit from the legs and the way I did that is I just used a scrap piece of three quarter inch thick board, laid it on the floor, put the leg next to it and then I put the apron pieces on top. Now this gave me a consistent three quarter inch gap all the way around the table and offset it from the edge of the leg. So it's not flush and it gives it a little bit more style to the table. We'll go ahead and connect those until we form the base of our table. And then we'll go ahead and right in the middle, we'll add an extra support just to make this table a little bit stronger. Once the legs are fully assembled, we can go ahead and now this is really up to you. You can finish them in any way that you want. But before you finish them, I would recommend that you go around and you sand the pieces really well and go through your sanding process from a rough grit to a medium grit to a finer grit to a super fine grit depending on whether you're going to stain these or whether or not you're going to paint these. Now for me, I kind of roughed it out, smoothed out the edges, and I even rounded out the corners where it would touch the floor just to give it a little bit more detail and give it a little bit more of a worn appearance. Once I was done with all the sanding, I went ahead and I set up the paint booth and I painted the legs with a semi-gloss white paint and primer spray paint. This made it nice and easy to just paint the legs quickly and get them ready for assembly. Now that I got the legs painted, it was time to start on the tabletop, but I realized I forgot to drill the pocket holes into the top pieces of the apron to screw the tabletop onto. So in hindsight, I should have did this before I painted, but I went ahead and re-drilled those and then just did a little bit of touch up. To assemble the tabletop, I just took the individual 2x pieces that I use, and in my case the 2x10s, and I put them side by side, I drilled a bunch of pocket holes, and then I used a combination of glue, I put a little glue between each piece, and then I cinched it together using bar clamps and the pocket hole screws. I did that board by board until I had all four together, and this is what the final assembly looked like. Now one note uh, and tip about drilling these pocket holes, you don't need to go crazy with it. You don't want to put them so close together that you're going to split the wood. So just try to hit it up in the corner, maybe the middle on the um, apron. And then when it comes to the table, space them in alternating directions maybe every foot and a half or so. Now when I cut the boards to the table, I knew it wasn't probably going to be perfect and everything wasn't going to be flush. So when I mounted the boards together, I made sure one side was flush and I kind of left the other side a little bit long. To make it perfectly flush, what I did is I used a straight edge, clamped it down on top of the tabletop, and then used a circular saw to cut it perfectly straight. With the table perfectly straight and square, now it's time to go ahead and do more sanding. And here we go, and I will give you a 30 minute montage on the whole sanding process from my thickest grit all the way down to my find this grid. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that at all. We're just not even going to look at sanding. Sanding is a horrible, horrible thing that no human being should ever have to do. But we do. With the sanding complete, we can go ahead and we can do the finishing. Now, finishing is really up to you. It's your table and, you know, you can make it look like whatever you want. Now, I found this cool driftwood aging stain that you mix with water and then put on and it was actually pretty cool. So I decided to Give it a try out and this is what the package looked like. You can get it on Amazon and I'm sure get it directly from the manufacturer website as well. When you put this on, it kind of ages the wood in fast forward. So I did that, I ran it on the wood. The wood kind of went from a brand new shiny sanded piece to something that looked like I found it on the beach. Once that was dry, 
I went ahead and I put um, four coats of polyurethane on and I just used my favorite uh, rub on polyurethane and I did three coats then I sanded with a I think a 240 grit sandpaper just to kind of take the bubbles out of it and then I put one more coat on so four coats of polyurethane in total and I wound up with a finished tabletop that looked like this and I think it looked pretty good. I let everything cure overnight and then I brought the tabletop upstairs and I laid it down on a rug for protection face down and I laid the legs on top of the table. I measured up around the edges to make sure everything was equal all around and then I either stood on it or clamped it in place while I put a bunch more pocket screws in to hold the tabletop to the legs. The final step to the process was to add some furniture sliders to the bottom of the table legs and the project was done. So here we go. This was the final table project. I know you've been staring at it all along, but as you can see, it really wasn't that bad of a project and it comes out looking really, really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this project and we'll try this yourselves. As always, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below and I am happy to answer anything that you guys throw at me. Um, also, it would be very, very much appreciated if you go ahead and hit the like button on this. And if you wanna see more videos from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new content comes out. And now that the project's finished, it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So kick on back, crack one open, maybe open a bottle of wine. Don't forget your coaster, and we will see you next time.